Now we have a number of ways of uh, producing an extruded part. There are basically four, four methods for extruding. You have microwave, you have salt, you have uh, hot air vulcanizing, we call HAV, and you have conventional cure, which is steam cured. It's a matter of taking uncured rubber, feeding it through like your old meat grinders. People are always amazed to find out what our material is like before we extrude it. And actually, it's just a piece of, it looks like, it feels like a piece of uncured gum rubber. And you extrude a profile. That have a die on the end of it, it's in the configuration you're looking for. It goes through a, a tunnel, passes through a heating unit that, that cures it. And cure it in line to make the proper durometer. And in some cases, we have cutters on the end of them. People want pieces cut out of that extrusion. They just cut them in the end, they fall in a box, and you're done. Or we put it in an oven to post-cure. Now, what we try to do is run most of our product through our continuous cure line because it saves labor, saves energy. When we get to the end of the line, it's ready to put in a box and ship it, whether it be cut or shipped as a coil or a straight length. And then on the uh, conventional cure, which is steam cure, we extrude it and then we put it in vulcanizers, autoclaves, and cure the material. So there are some materials that require that and there are other compounds that can't be run with continuous cure. What minor rubber really does better than most of our competitors are our molded corners. In fact, if you look at this part, you can hardly see the parting line. That's how good a job we do. It's something that not every rubber company wants to do that, that extrudes rubber, but it's something that we specialize in and take a great deal of pride in. Yeah, you can do it. You can do a molded corner, you can do an injection molded corner, or you can do a butt splice. They're all done under heat and pressure. Many of our competitors use glue. The way we do it, we do it under heat and pressure which gives you a much better bond. We use a cold bond, it's more apt to fail. Now it's cheaper and it's easier to do because you don't need the equipment that we have, but this is the right way to do it. Yeah, as far as we're concerned, glue won't do. You've got to do it in a vulcanized process. Here's an example of a, of a gasket that we've made with a splice corner. Uh, it's got a 90 degree angle here and probably got a 60 degree angle here. And uh, we can do cross sections up to maybe two and a half, three inches by four or five inches. And also inexpensive. Tooling for this, you have the extrusion die and you have the molds for the molded corners. You, your tooling is well under $1,000. A lot of places don't offer all the capabilities that we have for uh, putting corners on, on extruded parts. Here's a, an example of a butt splice gasket, which is just like a, used as an O-ring. Uh, we can do these where they're solid, or we can do them with a butt splice if they have a hollow ID. It doesn't have to be round, it could be rectangular, it could be any kind of special shape. As long as we have enough of a wall, we can make a bond. The advantage of a, of a butt splice or a molded splice is that it, it stands up, it won't fall apart. Here's something that we're doing right now for uh, our tra transportation account, where we extrude the, uh, the gasket, we buy the sensors, and then we insert the sensor and deliver it as, a, as a, an assembly to the customer. Let me show you one part here because it's um, easy to see because we did it with two different color silicones. So here we have an extrusion, same profile here, same profile here. We place this in a mold, we inject the molded corner to, uh, to bring the two together and this will never come apart. This part we could only do in say six foot lengths and cure it conventionally or the ovens aren't deep enough. So what we do is take two long lengths and then butt them together to form an even longer length. And, and so you have a splice here that is almost equal to the strength of the product itself. Here's an example of our being able to mark parts with your uh, data. We can put a mill spec on it, we can put your part number on it, and you can repeat every so many feet or every so many inches. So we do that in line too, so that's not a stencil. What's great about extruding is that we can take a, uh, a profile. Say you want this profile here. We can produce this in 10, 15, 20 foot lengths when well, our extruding process. And the cost of tooling is negligible. We have an EDM where we make our own tooling in-house. Uh, it's not a profit center. So we're able to make a die like this for $350, and that's your total tooling cost. And we can run anywhere from 500 feet to 10,000 feet, 25,000 feet at an economical price and with quick turnaround times. And we can run small quantities. Order sizes for, for production can be anywhere from $500 up. So you could start off with a part, never made it before, 
come to us, we'll say, okay, the, uh, the die on this is going to be $350, and uh, I can run you $500 worth of material as a minimum run if it's from a standard compound. And therefore, for less than $1,000, you go from nothing to getting a production part. We always say, let all your rubber problems be minor problems.